So hi, I am Paul Firth, and I'm the program coordinator for Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology. We're so glad to have you here on the call. And with us today are uh, several professors who've been teaching uh, within this program or have even, have even architected this program uh, for students. Uh, we have several people from industry who are deeply interested in uh, increasing the number of graduates uh, in electronics and computer engineering technology. I hope to have a, a student on board, but I'm not sure if we're gonna have a current student or not. Yeah, either way, we really hope to be able to field your questions uh, when we get to the end. You wanna go ahead, uh, Dr. Sassenfeld, Rolf. Oh yeah, hi, so my name's uh, Rolf Sassenfeld. I'm a associate professor in the ET department, and I was an uh, uh, ESET coordinator uh, before Paul for a few years, started in 2012, uh, just recently kind of shifted over to information technology, but uh, I've been teaching uh, classes in the ESET program for uh, eight years or so, uh, created a couple courses, including the, uh, the applied power engineering course, which uh, a lot of the students really like, and uh, allows us to not only look at uh, three-phase power and engineering, but we also look at uh, energy conversion with AC and DC type motors. So we uh, created a lab that we have that uh, has a lot of uh, machines that we can run and, and the students get a good um, hands-on experience measuring voltages from uh, shunt coils and field coils and, and uh, RPMs and such like that. Okay, Jeff, you can introduce. Oh. Yes, uh, I'm Jeff Baisley. I'm retired, so I'm very relaxed and everything. So it's it's quite comfortable. Uh, I taught for the Department uh, for Engineering Technology for 30 years. Uh, I did 10 years of uh, no, what I call normal work, is how I always described it, uh, before I joined the faculty. I did that, and uh, I had the opportunity to do many, many, many things while I was at the uh, department and uh, uh, got some really neat things. Uh, uh, we, I know we have at least one representative from Encore here, and I'm all proud of the fact that I was helped to help establish uh, a student relationship uh, for recruiting uh, with them. It worked out extremely well for us and for them, and uh, so that was a wonderful thing to, to have. And so uh, I served as department head for five plus years and so but now I'm retired so that's me if I were to listen to Ralph I would have been able to avoid this but I guess I haven't taken your class yet Dr. Sassenfeld uh, so <laughs> also, also uh, Chelsea if you can introduce yourself uh, hi I'm Chelsea Lester I'm the student program coordinator and scholarship coordinator for the College of Engineering Okay, and uh, I guess, uh, Dr. Firth, if you can introduce our alums. Yeah, I'd be glad to. So, uh, Jonathan Trejo, would you just say hello, please? Hi, everybody. Hey, John. Uh, great, you. great. And Jonathan Trejo is uh, working now at El Paso Electric, representing El Paso Electric here. Um, Casey, you wanna say hello, please? Sure, good afternoon everybody. I'm Casey Amundsen, uh, graduated New Mexico State 2010 and I uh, currently am the commissioning manager for Encore, so here to represent Encore from Texas as well. Thank you, Casey. Uh, Eugene Hanway, are you able to introduce yourself now? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, my name is Eugene Hanway. I graduated from uh, NMSU. Uh, Dr. Beasley okay. was actually one of my uh, <laughs> teachers whenever he was there. Um, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Beasley. Um, since then, I have been working in the IC community um, and I do a lot of uh, really cool stuff. I get to travel a lot. Um, I am a lifer. I was born and raised here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, I have a degree from Doniana Branch and I have uh, my bachelor's degree in the, uh, uh, it was double ET back then but um, and again I'm born and raised here and I've been here my whole life so um, 
I'll never, probably never depart. But I currently work for a company called MacWorks. Uh, it's a big choice of mine. It is a very small company. We are a company of 40. Of those 43 are NMSU graduates. Great, thank you, Eugene. And I think that's all, Tony. Okay, well, hopefully I can control the rest of the, the hacking world. As I said, computer engineering technology is very important. And you just saw an illustration of that. So um, I'm going to show you a video uh, about a student. And so this is a real video rather than the video we just heard a, a couple of minutes ago. So let me share the screen and see if I can start that. And this will introduce. I like the fact that it was a challenge. That's what I like most about it. It's common for, it's very common actually for me to be here late at night, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock. Uh, I'm very okay with it. For some reason, I don't know why, I like to torture myself. <laughs> I'm Virgil Grasso and I'm from Boone, New Jersey. And my major is a bachelor's in electronics and computer engineering technology. There is a big stereotype that women can't do math or can't, you know, work with high tech stuff. <laughs> but I've taken the hardest level math course in this that the school offers and I'm here to attest that that's not true. In this major, basically with the computers we do a lot of digital programming. Without them, we'll do a basic circuitry design and actual actually building circuits. Yep, the number of pixels that I see. So it won't be able to judge how far away the object is. This major is definitely a mix between theory and lab. One hour of theory and three hours of lab. That's why I liked it. That's why I came here. I, I learn a lot better doing. My project is an autonomous color tracking robot. Autonomous meaning that uh, it doesn't have a remote control. Um, nothing is controlling it except for itself. Color tracking basically it will follow a spe specific color that you choose. In this case, I chose red. And then robot is just the you know, thing that goes along with it. It's working on itself. It was a uh, previous student's project that I took and just improved, made you know, made it better. It's a camera. Um, right in the front of it that actually does track colors. It takes JPEG pictures uh, very, very quickly, actually. Uh, it has its own microcontroller right on it, so uh, basically it'll just send to the other microcontroller that I have on here uh, how many pixels of that color that I see. And then that other microcontroller just controls the wheels, basically. Kind of make a, a bunch of, I guess you could call it contingency plans. What to do if this happens, what to do if that happens. Running into objects was also a problem, which I fixed and added uh, sensors to it so that it wouldn't do that anymore. My professor did tell me that it was very well done. Over winter break, I reverse engineered the existing robot that they had. The reward for completing this major, I think, is having job security. <laughs> and I actually do have a job, you know, for after I graduate. The position that I got was a systems application engineer. I wouldn't be able to do that job without being here first. So they are relying on the skills that I learned here to do the job. Okay, so I just wanted to show that intro video just to give you an idea about some of the concepts there about how important it is to have engineering uh, design and also um, the concepts about electronics and computer engineering technology, how there's a combination of hands-on and, and in-class work. And so, and it's about problem solving at its core. So I think I'll turn it over now, uh, the rest of the, of, the, of the session here to Dr. Firth, and then also, I guess we'll have some information that we'll be able to share as well as answer questions. So hello, I want to tell you a little bit about myself before uh, I get into it. just a short presentation on electronics and computer engineering technology here at NMSU. Um, in high school, I took my first programming class and I loved it. Uh, and then um, as I was going through college, I took an electronics class where I was programming a microcontroller. Again, a class I really loved. 
I loved just solving technical problems. I wanted the chance to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and um, I wanted this sense of helping on a team, you know, being able to contribute on a team uh, uh, so that, so that uh, my team would be successful and grow. Uh, and finally, I really enjoy working with people, which kind of pushed me into this, this place where I am now, where I'm a teacher. But uh, it started all with um, technical problem solving. After my bachelor's degree, I became a project engineer in the automotive industry, working on airbag systems when they were first coming out in the late 80s. Um, they involved crash sensors and what we call diagnostic modules. Today, I would just say it was a mini computer that was constantly uh, monitoring the airbag system in automobiles, making sure they were working. And then if they did detect there was a legitimate accident to make sure to supply the energy necessary to blow uh, the airbags and save lives. Um, I also got involved with automated test equipment in the manufacture of those crash sensors. And so all those things were possible uh, because of the training that I received. And I got to say it colors so much how I uh, get into teaching or how I, how I view teaching that it needs to be practical, uh, needs to have, uh, you know, kind of an application in mind uh, and is really useful for students uh, for their career to come. So uh, with that introduction, I want to um, then share my screen and just uh, give about a, a four or five minute uh, presentation on uh, electrical, uh, electronics and computer engineering technology uh, here uh, at, at uh, New Mexico State University. So um, the ESET bachelor's degree, as was kind of uh, implied or, or shared in that short video, is it really links theory with application. Um, it's based on electronic and computer engineering theory, but coupled with that are the hands-on applications. Uh, and in fact, that's what you do. You, you get some theory, and then you go try it out, test it out, prove it in lab. In general, uh, this, uh, this degree has to do with applied design, so designing for a specific application, maintenance, the implementation, building, testing, verifying of electronic and computer systems. Our graduates, while they're here, gain knowledge and experience, and then from here are launched into well-paid careers. And the question I ask is, is ESET the right major for you? Um, if you're interested in electronics and computers and you like to learn and do things in hands-on, this really could be the right major for you. Uh, just a curriculum overview. We are ABED accredited, and I would say as you're looking at different programs, make sure that they are. This is a four-year, 121 credit hour program, and one of the benefits is you have knowledgeable and very friend and available faculty in this program. We have three minors and concentrations, digital forensics, information security technology, renewable energy technology, in case you want to dive into one of those, into one of those specialty areas. Okay. So, um, and so as I was saying about the senior uh, capstone design, uh, this is the kind of culminating experience of your undergraduate career where you're working with under other majors uh, on a major project uh, that's never been done before. It involves analysis and design. There's a budget, project management. There's a real customer and deliverables are expected at the end of your project. So this is meant to be as real world as possible uh, within your program. The first part of the electronics and computer engineering curriculum is the word electronics. So I wanna tell you for, about that first part, what's included in our curriculum. You will learn to design, build, and test electronic systems with applications in DC and AC circuits, electronic devices such as transistors and operational amplifiers. You'll learn about signal processing, communications such as wireless communication, radio communication. You'll learn about electric power. Uh, and on the right, uh, you see the picture there of the applied power lab. Uh, with, with motors and generators and students working in there. Also renewable energy 
and then also instrumentation. The second part of this ESET curriculum, electronics and computer, what do you get on the computer side? Well, you'll learn C programming, you'll learn uh, to, to prototype using the Arduino hardware software platform, you'll learn Java programming, you'll take a class in computer networking, digital logic networks, microprocessors, and then you'll learn about programmable logic known as FPGAs and a a programming language for that logic known as VHDL. What industries do our students go to work in? Automotive, that's where I went to work in. Defense, electronics, government, research labs, power utilities. And what about the jobs? Our job placement rate is above 90% at graduation with a median starting salary of $70,000. The typical job titles might be computer engineer, electrical design engineer, electronics engineer, electronics technologist, and power engineer. What are some of our established employers, those who come back year after year saying, I wish we had more of your ESET graduates that we could hire? Here you see a list of some of them, Boeing, El Paso Electric, General Electric, Hensel Phelps, Lockheed Martin, Los Alamos National Labs, Encore, Raytheon, Sandia National Labs, Tesla, White Sands Missile Range, and Cummins. And we have um, three of those, um, uh, two employers listed here and a third one that are ready and willing to talk about uh, opportunities for electrical, electronics and computer engineering technology graduates. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna stop my screen share and uh, I want to introduce uh, first um, Casey from Encore. Um, would you say something just about your background, your journey, uh, what you do, and then say something about your company as well? Um, and I appreciate that. Sure. Appreciate the, uh, the time to uh, come and talk to you all in New Mexico State is a uh, very fond memory that I have just as pretty much anybody who's had the uh, pleasure of passing through and enjoying the real green chili that you never knew was there until you came to the state of New Mexico. But uh, my background is, is uh, I actually came from Washington State, uh, went down to New Mexico State on a uh, baseball scholarship. So I had the pleasure of uh, representing the college from an athletic standpoint. So that was a lot of fun went through the electronics computer engineering technology program while I was there. Uh, had the uh, pleasure of being taught by Mr. Beasley himself and a couple other really great professors. Um, I'm getting a little bit dated, so a lot of the folks that taught me are no longer teaching there. So uh, that's uh, a great sign for, you know, continuous development and out with the old and with the new, I guess, right? Uh, I went to uh, do an internship with Encore Electric Delivery uh, one semester prior to graduation. And from that point on, I was offered a full-time position, went to go work for Encore as a protection and control technician is what we call. I uh, went through the progressionary ranks through that as you, uh, you know, learn and grow and test out of your current position, then transition into management where I was a manager in Dallas, which is our largest uh, service territory. And then most recently, about two years ago, I transitioned into a new organization where I handle all of the protection and control and diagnostic testing, uh, capital construction for all of Encore's territory. So that's my journey. And um, I can go into more about what Encore does and who we are now or later. You, you tell me. I'm here to serve. Do it now. It's a good chance. Tell them a little bit about Encore. Okay, so Encore is an electric utility company. We do transmission and distribution. Uh, we do not handle generation or retail. Uh, back before deregulation happened, we generated, we transmitted, and we sold, but the government didn't uh, appreciate that, so they went through deregulation, and now we just handle the transportation of electricity to our consumers. Uh, we're the largest utility in the state of Texas, and I believe that we're the fifth largest utility in the nation as of right now. Uh, our service territory serves about a third 
of the residents in the state of Texas, over 10 million customers. We're continuously growing all the time. Uh, we were purchased about two years ago from a, a company out in the uh, California area by name of Sempra. So Sempra has been using Encore as a tool to grow, which is an excellent opportunity for us because that means we're continuously looking for uh, bright and smiling new employees to help us meet our capital expenditure mandates. Uh, as you can expect, the electrical infrastructure on the, uh, you know, not only in Texas, but nationwide is continuously aging and it requires maintenance that's federally regulated. Um, and, you know, we, we have to continually make sure that we adhere to those regulations, make sure that we're providing quality service, upgrading our aged infrastructure with new and, you know, better equipped technology. And let's see, from a intern perspective, we are about to start our, what we like to call Camp Kalachi. And if y'all don't know what a Kalachi is, it's just a uh, little pastry with a hot dog in there. And we call it Camp Kalachi because we usually bring Kalachis for the interns when they do their presentations. But prior to the struggles of, of COVID, we would be doing our internship presentations starting in a couple of weeks. Uh, and essentially we give them a project and they complete the project. They go and present it to our senior leadership along with all hiring managers across the regions of Encore. And the interns are working on that feverishly right now. And we're about to do a, uh, um, a test run on Monday. So all of our interns are scrambling, asking questions, trying to finish projects and, you know, get everything that they need. Uh, I think that we, our intern class this year, I think we had, with all the craziness going on, our target was 42, and I want to say that we landed somewhere around 36, so that was, you know, a little bit down, but we were still very excited to be able to get at least that number of students. Uh, we always try to get a uh, solid number from New Mexico State, and uh, we have a couple that are working for us now, and so really excited about that and I think that that's pretty much all I have unless anybody has any questions and I can save that for the end as well. There we're going to wait on questions Katie sorry uh, Casey we're going to wait on questions so can I go to um, uh, Eugene would you uh, introduce yourself and your company now at this time? Sure. So uh, again, my name is Eugene Hanway. I actually graduated in 2006 um, from NMSU. Um, I currently work at the Aerospace Data Facility Southwest. Um, it's a big intelligence community uh, building. Um, lots of different uh, defense contractors that work there. Um, I currently work for a very small company called MacWorks. Um, I am uh, employee number 38 of this company of about 40 now. Um, the, the, it's a big choice. I worked for the big companies. I worked for, uh, Harris, who is now L3 Harris and has, I don't know, 40, 50, 60,000 employees, um, and left there after 10 years, um, joined a smaller company named Bit Systems, who got bought out by CACI. Uh, it just was not for me, the big corporate life. I always wanted to start my own business and this was a startup company and and uh, decided to jump over to there. Uh, the benefits are tremendous. Um, they, they give us a very well compensated 401k plan. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great place to be um, in the field that I work in. Um, I do have a uh, top secret security clearance. So my advice to all the folks that are thinking about going into the field that I am in uh, you know, keep keep a clean record. Don't do dumb things while you're in college. Um, I did a few of them. I just never got caught. And um, it's yeah, it, it is a great place. There is a lot of competition for the highly qualified uh, students that come out of uh, NMSU. Um, and the nice thing is, is uh, you know, I don't have to. I I can go talk to the president of my company at any time. So. Um, but we are looking to start up an internship program 
the <laughs> negative part with mine is that most of our contracts are cleared contracts. So you would have to obtain a security clearance, which right now is running anywhere from six to 12 months um, to grant. So we like to try to recruit early um, in the, uh, whenever you guys are, you know, sophomores ish so that that way we can work on getting a clearance for you um, once you have a clearance it opens many doorways for you to do many different things um, right now i don't do a lot of electronics um, i mostly do system administration um, i had uh, great teachers while i was there uh, miss lynn kelly was there dr beasley of course um, and the infamous uh, mr jenkins um, but the things I did take away from NMSU and from the program that have really, really helped me is uh, Dr. Jenkins really took us and made us, he made us work with every group, every person in the class, and that taught you who you wanted to work with and who you did not want to work with. At the end, you got to choose your group for your senior project, and that's how it is in the, wor in the real world. You don't get to choose your teammates you have a team that you're assigned to and you work with them and you know if, if i could pass on anything from my learnings there is have the attitude of you go in there that you want to work you don't care what the work is you want to make the best of what you have and be resourceful at what you're doing you know, use the internet use your friends use you know whatever you need to do to get to the end goal but and you know like i said uh, we we will try to reach out to Dr. Firth to see if we can't start our internship program here uh, in Las Cruces. Gosh, thank That's you. So, thank you so much, Eugene. And then uh, third, we have a Jonathan uh, Trejo from uh, El Paso Electric. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hi, so I graduated with my bachelor's in electrical engineering technology around 2007, so quite a bit a ways back. Um, following that, I went and got my graduate degrees. I got a master's in finance from NMSU, and I got a master's in electrical engineering from NMSU as well. And during that time, I was a graduate student for both Dr. Beasley and Professor Jenkins, and I was doing a little bit of uh, research in renewables, uh, which sparked my interest in the power industry. Um, so right now, I'm currently a uh, principal protection and control engineer. Um, I'm also a professional engineer licensed in the states of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. And uh, my industry is very similar to Casey's. Uh, pretty much El Paso Electric is in charge of the generation, transmission, and distribution of power uh, for our customers in between Vamporn to Hatch. Uh, so my job is to make sure that all the electric circuits, whether it be transmission lines, uh, transformers, distribution circuits are protected to the highest, and those circuits are the most reliable. And if something happens on those circuits, uh, I make sure that the devices called protective relays um, uh, see that fault and they actually extinguish it in a certain amount of time. Um, one cool thing about my job is I've actually been able to travel the world as a protection engineer. Uh, I've been asked to do a lot of uh, what we call factory acceptance tests in different parts of the world. I've been to Austria, I've been to the Netherlands, I've been to Italy, I've been to Mexico, and it was all as a part of my job. I also have gone to travel the US a lot. Um, so, so those of you that are interested in engineering, it's not just uh, sitting here at home like we have to do now due to the pandemic. We actually uh, get out and you know get to travel the world and, and see different places. Um, my job is very war rewarding, and um, um, that's pretty much everything I have. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Rolf and or Jeff, was there anything else you wanted to say before we go to questions and answers? Yeah, what is your objective of this uh, meet these meetings? What we want to do is introduce, um, they could be uh, high school students, they could be freshman engineering students who have not quite decided on a major. We want to introduce electronics and computer engineering technology so they get a flavor of that degree in case this is something that fits them. Okay. Ralph, was there anything else you wanted to add before we uh, move it to questions and answers? Yeah, so the only thing I wanted to add is uh, I'm an electrical engineer, and I think uh, I'm looking at about three or four other ones right now. 
And uh, so coming to work in this department and getting to know the students was, uh, was a really good experience. And, you know, I found out that um, there's a lot more uh, fun in the hands-on aspects of electronics and engineering and electrical engineering. And so I was always, even when I worked on a PhD, I was a very hands-on and not, not so much a theoretical person. And uh, I always wanted to build things. And so I really found a great match with the ESEP program. And I found out that uh, students that look at electrical engineering sometimes are put off by uh, the amount of theory that's in there. And there's a significant amount of theory in electrical engineering. Where an ESET, we don't cover quite as much, but uh, we balance it out again with the, the applied aspects. And my experience has been uh, looking at our alumni that going forward, that they're just as qualified as electrical engineers in the workplace, that they have uh, the abilities and the knowledge and, and they have enough of the theory to find out the things they don't know and, and to move forward as, as any electrical engineer would. So I just wanted to, put in that little bit of difference, differentiation between our degrees. Great, thank you so much, Rolf. So at this point, I wanna open it up uh, for any questions. Um, again, thank you for being on here, um, you know, to listen, but uh, wanna see if you have any specific questions. You can use the chat room. You could also speak. <laughs> Either way is great. Uh, what's the enrollment like right now? Because I've been away a couple of years, so what's the enrollment now for the department or for the uh, program? Right now, the enrollment <clears throat> uh, for the degree is about 50 students, and it means class sizes in general are small. Um, they're in the 20s, in the 10s, something like that. And there's an advantage to students of the attention being known in the department. Uh, that's one advantage, but we are looking to grow, uh, double it, uh, and get up to about a hundred uh, majors. That's that's our goal. Okay, thank you. Other <laughs> other questions? Questions from some of our uh, students? Yeah, Taj has a question. You can I can unmute. Yeah. Hi, sorry, my name is Teresa Pia. Um, I'm using a family member's thing. I got kicked out for some reason. <laughs> Um, I am a senior in high school and I'm interested in electrical engineering. Uh, what is the difference between electronics and computer engineering and electrical engineering exactly? Sure. Rolf, you want to go for it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the difference is so both degrees have roughly the same amount of credit hours. So, from a curriculum perspective, it's a matter of what can you do in those credit hours. And approximately half of that is uh, core curriculum. So the, the differentiation is in the last two years of the degree. And so uh, the electronics and computer engineering technology spends a little bit more time looking at analog systems, communication systems, and has more lab hours in that uh, remaining 60 hours of the program. So you're going to be in, in more labs and have more hands-on experience uh, than you would in the electrical engineering. Electrical engineering has labs as well, but they'll have more um, uh, theoretical courses compared to the ESET. So you might not get as far <coughs> in your math um, in ESET, but you will learn have to learn calculus and uh, you'll do very well uh, in the labs and the hands-on exercises that we have. And I have one more question. Uh, what kind of things do you look for in students um, in our transcripts so that you can, we can be accepted into the electronics engineering programs? And what kind of grades and SAT scores? Uh, Tony, can you help me on that one? Because I think that's more an NMSU policy than a specific department policy. Yeah, it really is an NMSU policy. And I think for the successful student, we, we would like to have, see a student that is interested in, in mathematics, the applications of mathematics. So it'd be important for a student to be, uh, to be interested so that they can 
to get that background. I think that's the biggest issue. Our our um, admissions criteria for NMSE are published, so we, we, in the College of Engineering, we don't have any additional ones. Now, if you choose one major over another, there may be some, some bit of background that will make it easier for you to get through the first year. Um, it depends on the major, but in terms of our admissions policies, there's, there's no difference between uh, what we admit and, uh, and the university. I would say the other thing that's important is the lab science. So make sure that you have the lab sciences so that you can also have the background so you can uh, complete the, the physics sequence. And depending on, on what your interests are and your major in engineering in general, you have chemistry as well with a laboratory-based um, application. Um. Would I be affected in any way if I'm taking physics this senior year and my school doesn't offer lab for physics? It depends on the kind of physics. I mean, we, we prefer physics that introduces calculus somewhere in the physics, and that's, that's, that's sufficient. Uh, other kinds of schools sometimes don't introduce uh, the use of calculus-based physics. But So that would be the only thing. If you don't have the physics lab, background, hopefully you have lab backgrounds in some other science. Thank you. So Teresa, do you feel like your questions were answered? Uh, yes, I do. I actually have one more, if you don't mind. Go for it. <laughs> um, would electronics and computer engineering or electrical engineering be more preparatory and more versatile for jobs in real life, uh, specifically NASA? Which one would be better? You're saying specifically for NASA? Yes, for NASA. Um, wow. Well, I will say what I read about electrical and computer engineering technology is it's viewed as a specialization within electrical and computer engineering. So it's based on the theory of electrical and computer engineering. And then the specialty is in the applied design the applications, um, the, the building and the testing. Um, and so I see that degree as, as, as a specialty. And, and it really depends on what you wanna, what piece you wanna go into, right? Um, for instance, I did a internship at TXU, which I'm, I'm assuming that both of these guys, Jonathan and Casey both know who TXU is in, in Dallas, Texas, but, um, and I just, it wasn't for me, right? I, I didn't enjoy um, the, the work that I was doing. So I actually went more towards system administration and um, that, you know, Linux, things like that, application design, than the actual hands-on, you know, taking computer electronics apart, putting them back together, doing all that you know um so th the nice part about this is that you get a broad scope of education and then you can kind of narrow your way into like i really enjoyed the the networking that we did the cisco the juniper all of that type of stuff and that's what really drove me back into linux to uh, system administration um and uh, you know doing configurations for big networks, routers, uh, Cisco routers, Juniper routers, Brocade. Um, so the nice thing is, is that you get a broad top, you get a broad scope of topics. And then once you find a job that you enjoy doing, you can really focus in on those specific things. And most companies will give you, you know, on the job training. They're not going to, 95% of the companies are not going to expect for interns or students that graduate to come out and be the expert in the field. Thank you. Sure, Teresa, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you Great. very much. Oh, you're welcome. Are there any other questions? I also put in the chat the NMSU entrance uh, requirements. So, but we have the same in the College of Engineering.
I had a couple questions that I wanted to ask uh, our graduates uh, that are on the line. Um, and if any student wants to interrupt me, you know, please do. Um, one of them would be, why did you choose this major? So any of our graduates wanna, wanna answer that? Why did you choose this major? <clears throat> I guess right, I'll um, start. Go for it, Casey. So I actually started in the double E program at New Mexico State. And I've always been a very hands-on person my entire life. And it was very uh, apparent that after my first semester that, you know, straight double E wasn't aligning with what I liked to do. And so uh, I met with the... Uh, couple of the academic advisors and they they showed me the the other option for the uh, the double ET or ESET degree however whichever flavor you want to call it and you know I went over there and started doing the more hands-on application and you know it was a much better fit uh, I felt like the uh, the theory and application combined together really prepared me for uh, you know, going into really any career that you want. And a couple of the comments that I want to make for some of the questions that were asked earlier, there's a couple of statements. So as far as EE versus WET or ESET, both can be registered as a professional engineer. So don't get caught up on the fact of that you're a EE can only be a registered, you know, PE. It doesn't matter, both can be registered. Um, and I'm actually working on my mind right now for the state of Texas. So hopefully I can get that wrapped up here pretty soon. The only difference is, is time. So for a straight double E, I want to say it takes four years of working under a registered PE in the state you're working in. And for a double ET or an ESET, it's eight years. So it just extends your time frame. And then also, as far as the difference between an electrical engineer and a ESET or double ET, is uh, a straight doubly you're going to be doing a whole lot more design and theory based type you know work as far as an electrical electronics engineer or technologist you know all the different schools have different names uh, you're going to be using your hands so if you like to be in the field taking something that's been designed implementing it making sure it works testing it figuring it out, fixing it, and then sending back the actual design that works to the engineer, then, you know, that's the path you should take. So it just depends on what, which way you want to go. Do you want to be in an office doing the design, or do you want to be the person who's actually doing more R&D and testing? Thanks, Casey. Um, I want to try a second question or a different question, uh, and someone else, another graduate might grab this. You know, either what did you like best about your ESET program or, or alternately, what was the most difficult part of getting through? Either what did you like best or what was the most difficult part? I'll jump in on this one. So I actually came from, uh, I got the best of both worlds. I got to do both EET and EE. But the one thing I liked the best about the EET program was that the faculty were more like family members. Um, I noticed that with the EET program, the faculty members had more time uh, or more office hours to answer students' questions. Uh, they were more available. Uh, sometimes the, the double E professors, uh, when I was there, a lot of their focus is on research and getting as much research money as, as they can get. So a lot of the time they didn't have that time for that one-on-one -on -one interaction with students. Um, but I never experienced that with the double uh, ET professors that I had when I was there. Great, thanks, Jonathan. Um, I have one more question. Um, how do you look for that first internship, that first job, that first internship? How do you get your foot in the door? You know, you're still a student, but you know what the goal is. The goal is, I want to get a job. How, how, did you, how do you get that first internship, that first job? Who'd like to take a stab at that one? I'll take a stab at it. So for me, it was actually uh, Dr. Beasley. Um, the person that hired me went to uh, Dr. Beasley and his team and said, who are your top performing students? We want to hire them. 
Um, and Dr. Beasley came up with the name of about 10 of us and the employer narrowed it down to seven of us. And then all seven of us actually got jobs um, working out at the same facility um, for the same contractor. Um, and my suggestion would be get to know your professors, you know, especially in the smaller community, the ESEP program or the WET program, um, get to know your professors, you know, uh, be, a, be a fly on their wall whenever you need help, ask them for help um, so that that way, whenever the question does come up or an employer does come and say, hey, we want to hire your top 10, you know, who are they? Your name is mentioned. Great, thank you, Eugene. Uh, are there any other questions from students who are listening? We definitely wanna, wanna be responsive and listen to you. I have a question. Uh, what, who is this, please? This is Paulina Sandoval. Hi, Paulina, glad Hi. you're on the call. Thank you, I'm glad I'm here too. Um, so I'm about to be a senior in high school and I was wondering if you have any advice for choosing a major in engineering? since there's so many of them, like I'm interested in engineering as a field in general, but I'm still not sure like how to make a decision because I don't want to go in and then just be like, oh, never mind. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, I, I got to tell you, um, I, I was kind of like you. I wanted to be an engineer. Uh, I didn't even hardly know what an engineer was. Um, and so I looked at a few things, you know, some of it was my high school experience where I got to do a little bit of program and then early programming. And then early in my college career, I did take an electronics class and liked it a lot. Um, I had a, a brother who kind of, who was a civil engineer and kind of pointed me in, 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 in the di direction more of electronics and computers as a real area of growth. And I would say it continues to be an area of growth, electronics and computers. Uh, one example is the automotive industry. They now hire more electronics and computer folks uh, than they do mechanical because there's so much electronics uh, in uh, the automobile these days. Um, and, and, I, and I think so much it really matters what fits you. Uh, and and uh, I can't say anyone would say this is the best engineering major. It's got to be to some extent, Pauline. It fits you, and and or Paulina. And I will say the best time to explore is what you're kind of doing now. So we're so glad you're here, and uh, your senior year in high school, and even your freshman year. That's a good time to be exploring. There's a class uh, that all of our freshmen take called Engineering 100, and it introduces all of our engineering students to all of the engineering disciplines. Uh, so again, giving you a chance to, to get a flavor of the different degrees. And I would just say, if you decide to change major earlier, the better, you know, your freshman year is a great time to change your major and your senior year is a terrible time to change major. Uh, does anyone else want to give a stab at that question? Um, what, would, what, what field to go into in engineering? Yeah, we, uh, we actually talked about this uh, earlier this week at another webinar, and, and it's like Dr. Firth mentioned, um, so you first look at what you're really interested in because you're going to be studying in that field, and so uh, obviously uh, our world is dominated by electronics nowadays and computer engineering technology. The number one most manufactured thing in the world is it the integrated circuit. Every day there's a ridiculous number of integrated circuits that are manufactured and every year it's a number that I can't even pronounce I heard recently. It's something like, you know, 10 trillion trillion integrated circuits. So obviously it's fascinating uh, just in that perspective. If you want to understand how electronics can shape us in the future, um, that's area. If you're really interested in things involving chemistry, if chemistry really excites you in high school, or if you like things about biochemistry um, and you like things that have to do with um, analytical problem solving, that's kind of more what chemical engineers do. They try to make things out of uh, you know dirt or stuff that comes out of the ground. 
or any kinds of biological processing. And then civil engineering, it's a clear connection. A lot of our students are interested in how to make things and improve the very structures that we live in. So I think it's the passion that you have for things that you can connect with. Myself, I connected with chemistry, I used to help my mom cook. Um, I actually wanted to be an archeologist. I didn't want to be an engineer, but uh, engineering is a better career. And so, and I always had an interest in chemistry, but actually nowadays I'm, I'm, I spend more time on the electronics aspects of my, of my research and my tech transfer. So uh, I don't think you can go wrong. I think you start with a passion. Definitely want to get the degree as Dr. Firth mentioned. That piece of paper is your, is your gateway into a whole career as we heard about professional engineers. That's a whole nother level where you have a lot of responsibility and it brings you into the, into the world of, of being able to uh, set directions in, in terms of being able to do government contracting and being able to certify things that are ready to be uh, unveiled or in the public. And there's also the areas of research that we do. And so that involves uh, research, not just to investigate something new, but it looks to make society better. And so a lot of our students get involved in research and that sometimes changes what they major in. Uh, so we have the ability to get students to, to do that. But um, and through our learning communities, when you take Engineering 100 at NMSU, you get involved with uh, our learning communities. You hear from our learning facilitators what their majors are and why they chose them. And I think that becomes the, the catalyst, catalyst for a lot of our students to start deciding. So that's a nutshell, real quick summary of our one hour webinar earlier this week. So Paulina, did that help answer your, uh, your question? Yes, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Are there any... Uh, Paulina, this is uh, Jeff Beasley. I, I'm retired, but I wanna mention something that I think is extremely important, is that the for uh, freshmen, the student organizations that are available for you to get involved with, and then you can discover all sorts of things for that. I mean, we have student organizations, I think Engineering Without Limits, they go everywhere in the world building, building things uh, for third world countries and stuff like that. You have, uh, you have the uh, mini Baja team you can get involved with, things like that. And so with that and getting uh, a little bit more uh, understanding of, of, the, of the opportunities that are out there, from a student point of view and a student organization, it's a great thing. So I just wanted to mention that, that that's something you'd want to look at the first thing as you enter the school. That's Thank all. You. Thanks, Jeff. Are there any other questions from students? Again, we're just so glad you're here. Our prospective students, high school students, just so glad you're here. Thank you, Paulina and Teresa. Great. So, Tony, I will turn it back to you for closing things out. You have one more question. One more question from Teresa. Teresa, go for Hi. it. Sorry, I'm known for asking lots of questions. Okay. Um, how much math do you study in the computer and electronics technology? Like, to what level do you go to? Sure. Um, we we go to the level of um, calculus, um, both uh, integral differential and integral calculus, and then there are applications in differential equations. And so this is uh, one full year of math beyond uh, college, uh, sorry, high school. Well, it's college algebra, trigonometry, pre-calc, it's one full year beyond that. So if I took calculus two already and I'm gonna take calculus three this semester, I would be done with the math in, if I go into electronic and computer engineering? I need a little help from Rolf whether there might be some things missing in terms of applications. I do know there is a statistics course, so you would need a class in statistics. But Rolf, would be, there be anything needed more in There's terms no more, of applications. No more additional uh, calculus. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Teresa. 
And again, any other questions? Otherwise, I'll hand it back to Tony to close us out. Let uh, Jonathan Trejo, let Jonathan Trejo explain his path and what he did, because uh, you know he ended up going on to grad school, and I think that's an important thing to think about. Yep. So I uh, got my bachelor's in double ET, and then I decided to get my master's in double E. And pretty much the only additional math class I had to take was differential equations. Um, but the good thing is that that counted as a uh, elective course in the double ET program back then. Um, so it's not like I was just taking an extra class just for the heck of it. It actually counted towards my degree. Um, so that was the only additional math class that I had to take uh, to get my master's in electrical engineering. And then I just had to take a couple of the double E courses, uh, a little bit more of the theory courses in double E, but they were really not that bad. And then following that, I jumped right into the graduate studies in, in uh, electrical engineering. And it took me uh, roughly about two to two and a half years to finish my master's in level. Thank you, John. So it's a, so, so it's a pretty, pretty easy transition between WET and WE, uh, just in case you do want to get uh, your uh, graduate degree. It's, it's not a hard transition at all. Thank you, Jeff and Jonathan. Yeah, that's great. Uh, great information. And it's, it's this kind of webinar that I think is, is really useful because you get a chance to see the faculty side and, and the overall college side, as well as hear from the graduates who have all, all the real knowledge because they go out in the industry. And so I just wanted to close by thanking again for, uh, for your attention. And I, in the chat room, you see uh, a couple of contact people. You have my contact email and then Chelsea Lester, who's probably the most important person that you can meet as an undergraduate because she's involved in scholarship coordination. And so uh, our alums, as well as our college, is blessed by having lots of people who believe in uh, making sure that students get financially what they need. And so uh, we, have a, we have a lot of different opportunities. And we also are introducing this, this fall a brand new idea. It's called E3. Um, and what it means is we're going to have students involved in a pilot project where you get a little bit of money, but you get a lot of experience in some specific areas of application. So what we'd like to have our students at the very beginning, all the way through the very end of their bachelor's degree, to be able to be involved in entrepreneurship and be involved in learning skills from people like the people you see here, industry mentors, that we can help you guide uh, getting online certifications, workshop certifications, getting all those skills that'll put you uh, really in good shape for internships. And we also have the ability to do design projects for those of you who have a passion to want to apply your knowledge as early as possible. So E3 initiatives is going to be the new thing you'll hear us talk about uh, this year. And so those of you get ready the following fall to uh, join NMSU, you'll also be able to participate. So it'll be a five-year pilot project. So thank you for your attention. And anything else? Last chance, I guess, for shout outs and any more information. Just a second. I have one thank more you. question. Oh, go ahead, Casey. So I'm sure that the other industry leaders will uh, agree with me, both Jonathan and Eugene. So if you wanted to uh, just start over and redo it all again, how do you, uh, how do you hit the rewind button and become a freshman again at New Mexico State? <laughs> well, you, there's no, no flux capacitor. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a excellent experience, and I I'm very thankful for uh, you know we we talked today about how uh, the the ESET program you you have a family of professors and students and. Uh, you know, no matter where you go, if you looked on on programs or applications like LinkedIn, you can see where where people have came from. And New Mexico State has a presence all over the the nation as as long as worldwide. And um, I have the pleasure of having a substantial amount of senior leaders and management and field workers in the company that I work with. And you know, work very closely with people in management at Encore that I actually was lab partners with in college. So, you know, you never know who you're going to end up with. And it's, it's really cool to have that aspect of being friends with somebody for, you know, 
16 years and you're, uh, you wind up, you know, trying to uh, move your company along the, uh, the railroad tracks and keep the wheels on the wagon. So pretty cool aspects, lifelong friendships and make the best of it. Very well, good. Thank you. And thank you, Casey. You can always visit us. So yeah, and we, in one form or another, virtually or on campus. So we're, we're open for business on campus. We're just going to be following all the rules that the state tells us. So, and we hope to have uh, some presence in the learning communities and hopefully into the spring, we'll be able to even expand some more. So again, thanks for your attention. And we also have Dr. Furt's contact information. So uh, yeah, so we have a request for someone to hang out. So Dr. Beasley, if I turn this over to you um, as, as a host, because I have to get moving on some other things, but Let's see. Uh, Great, and I, I just, I just want to thank everyone who was here today. Uh, thank you, uh, Rolf and Jeff. Thank you, uh, Casey and Jonathan and uh, Eugene, and uh, thank you for uh, Chelsea, Vladimir, uh, and then thank you for the students who came here with questions. Just really, really appreciate your presence here today. So, bye bye. <laughs>